Hello, Grace Chapel Life Groups. It's great to be back with you again this week with Pastor Jimmy. This is the Jimmy and Joe Show for Life Groups. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is an exciting week. As, as you know, Pastor Rob is starting off on the spiritual disciplines, and he is... Um, I very creatively put together some categories that the disciplines fall under, and we're going to be dealing with that over this series. And I'm really excited about that. And uh, this particular week, uh, we start with private devotions. Yeah. So um, why don't you kick us off? Tell us what we're thinking about here today. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we're going to talk a lot about Scripture, and, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of curiosity and questions, I think, in Life Group about what do you do? you know, and, and, or what do you not do, you know, that you think you should be doing. Yeah. And so I think there'll be a lot of interesting dialogue about, um, how to get into a habit of, um, scripture reading or the Sabbath. And, and I, th- I think those, um, those habits, those, um, those things that we're trying to learn, those abundant places that we're missing out on, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Um, are kind of, you know, waiting for us to disco- rediscover them or discover them. And mm-hmm. so today I want to talk a little bit about, let's just focus in on Scripture. Okay. You know, what are some habits over the years that for you as you're trying to get into the Word of God, the, you know, trying to get, first of all, your heart motivated mm-hmm. to be in the right place, to desire it, mm-hmm. and then... When you're doing it, you know what has worked for you. What has what has helped you to get into the word? What has impacted you the most? I guess over the years. Yeah, for me, Jimmy, I cannot, um, I can't think of scripture and reading scripture without that being combined with solitude. Ooh. I've never, even when I was a student in school, I'm not the kind of guy that could be in a noisy room and study. You know, some people can block out everything and study in the midst of chaos. I can't do that. I've got to right. be in my little remote place, my closet, if you will, as the scriptures talk about. And and so mine is coupled with solitude. And for me, when you start talking about the discipline of, of studying scripture, learning the word of God, I have to have a quiet place to get off and to do that. Ooh. And um, and that's, that. you know, funny story, Beth... Um, who we've been married 43 years now. <clears throat> she knows me real well, obviously. And um, when, I, when I don't have opportunities for solitude, and this is one of the interesting things about discipline that we need to remember, is once you have um, learned to enjoy the disciplines, it really gets you when you miss out. Right. When they're interrupted. And so if I go a period of time without my solitude, without my opportunity to sit down and study the Word and pray and, and do the things like that, it has a, an adverse effect on my personality and everything. As much as I enjoy being with people, I have to have my quiet time. And uh, even today with my adult children, I'll go, Mom, what's wrong with Dad? And she'll go, he's okay. We just got to leave him alone let him have some time. <laughs> and because she knows when, when I'm bumping up against it, it's been too long. Yeah. But for me, that's that that is what has worked in my life is is to to make sure that I have carved out time that it is a priority yeah. to be able to step into uh, to my quiet time and study the Word and read the Scriptures and let let God talk to me through His Word. And that's kind of one of the ways that the different disciplines kind of interplay mm-hmm. and interrelate, right? So if mm-hmm. you don't have space, it's going to be difficult. To yep. get into the word in the first place, so I guess carving out a space, yeah, is kind of step one, really. Step one, yeah. you know, it's kind of like if you're gonna, you know, you, you really do anything new in, mm-hmm. in your routine mm-hmm. of your life, you have to first create the space, and then you can start practicing and failing yep. at doing the new thing, right? And so, I guess, what does it look like for you when you kind of, uh, when over the years when you've failed? Mm. When you've gone, you know, I am out of sync. I am not getting alone. I'm not in the Word. Um, this is going to come up a lot because I think we all kind of feel a little bit of shame mm-hmm. around things we ought to do and we don't. In fact, I've yeah. ne- I've heard this more than anything 
Mm-hmm. I really need to get in the Word, and I'm not. Right, right. And it's more of a guilt-based motivation. Mm-hmm. Like, I ought to, but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess my question is, how do you get your want to back? Yeah, and that's a great question. I, uh, For me, it's it's not so much a guilt. I, I, you know, God loves me no matter what, mm-hmm. and he's always here for me. He misses me when I don't carve out the time. So so I would lay guilt aside. If you're feeling guilt or shame or something like that, cast that away. That is not of God. Uh, but for me, what I see happening, Jimmy, is that my my whole attitudes change. Uh, I, I start making um, poor decisions. I mean, it just has an adverse effect in your life. Mm-hmm. When, when you're not carving out that time, then your anxiety comes up. I mean, you're, you're not dwelling on the Word of God. You're not meditating on the Word of God. It's not uh, filling your heart, your soul, with, with God. And so, therefore, that hole is being filled with something else. And so uh, anxiety levels raise. You start snapping at your family, at your friends. You, you can go into depression. You know, all kinds of things happen as a result of failing to carve out time for these disciplines. And, you know, Scripture is one way, and probably the out of the disciplines in private devotion, the mm-hmm. primary way that we learn to hear God's voice and, and understand who God is, and so we can distinguish between our voice, the devil's voice, and God's voice in our head, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I think filling our minds with what's true in Scripture. Right. Um, I want to give people a bunch of different ideas. Uh, I, I br- grabbed some books off my shelf just one of them by Philip Yancey called The Bible That Jesus Read, and it's all about why the Old Testament really matters. So mm-hmm. if people are kind of like, okay, you know, the, the Old Testament's a complete mystery to them, this really kind of will energize the why behind, um, you know, really understanding why the Old Testament matters. Um, this is a new thing that came out and I that I really think is neat, and it's called Immerse. Hmm. And it takes the, the Bible and breaks it down into big chunks. So the beginnings is creation and exodus, you know, Genesis and, and exodus. Right, and, right. and as you kind of read through, it reads just like you're reading a novel. Hmm. And there's no numbers. There's, but up in the top left, you can see where you are <clears throat> in Scripture. It is Scripture. Mm-hmm. Like it is word for word scripture, but it's written not as a paraphrase, but as actual scripture, but it's broken down into big chunks. So you can actually have more of a a novel, immersive reading experience. It changes things for people that have kind of gotten into a dry place with scripture and think about it differently. So they have all the different major sections of the prophets, the chronicles, the poets, the Mm. gospels. So you, you have all of these, you know, the kingdoms, you know. <clears throat> Another one, let's see if I can reach over here, is the story. And the story is more of a paraphrase walking you through Scripture um, as a, a giant overview walking you through the whole Word. So if you don't really have the scaffolding of really understanding how does the Bible fit together, right? this is a great way hmm. to kind of understand, well, how does the whole Bible interconnect and sure. fit together um, in a way that um, is very easy to read mm-hmm. and it boils the stories down, mm-hmm. um, not to like a children's book level, but to a to an adult level, you know? Right. And uh, yeah, and then the last two over there, In Search of Guidance, that's kind of developing a conversational relationship with God so that you're reading the Bible, but you're also kind of responding and there's a conversation going on between you and the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great book. It's called In Search of Guidance. And then How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. And that's about how do you read Scripture and then dig out more right. from it. And you're and you, maybe you hear somebody talk about the Word and you're like, it feels like they're getting way more out of that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. than I saw when I just read it. And that's teaching you how to think about Scripture in a way where you can mine it you bet. for all the gold. Right, right. Yourself. I know one of the things that um, Pastor Dave Beering uh, shared some time ago, he would oftentimes take, and if he wanted to 
kind of discover or rediscover something about God, say for the character of God or a particular attribute of God, <clears throat> he would get that color. Uh, he would get a specific color of a marker and dedicate that marker to that uh, what he was looking for. And he would read through the scriptures, and every time that he would see, for example, the character of God, he would highlight it. And I think that you know we can be creative in the way that we think about how are you reading the scriptures? Right. What are you looking for? And the more times you read it and the more times you go over it, you can kind of get specific like that and start looking, you know, where is Jesus in every book of the Bible? Right. You know, some of those kinds of things. And and those that keeps it exciting. It keeps it fresh. It keeps you um, in that wandering spirit, wanting to learn more, wanting to be hungry for more information and, uh, and, and to understand the complete story. Right. Because that's the other thing we have to realize. This is, a, is an ongoing story, and we're reading this big section of it. Right. And, uh, and, and, when, and it, when you read it as a story, uh, it, number one, it'll keep you from proof texting and building your own personal theology. Right. You, it'll, it'll keep you kind of honest, and you, you have to be true to the text when you do it that way. You know, and speaking of that, I think it's important, you know, this is <clears throat> my favorite class actually in seminary was uh, hermeneutics, which is just the study of scripture. So like, right. so you don't make up your own interpretation, right? but that you get it right, mm-hmm. you, you know, because there's a right <laughs> interpretation of scripture so that you can kind of go, okay, well, is this off base or is this in the, in the category of, of accurate. Yeah. And I, I, I think the very basics of that course, we would we would get a scripture and we would have to kind of interpret it like a commentary where we mm-hmm. would be interpreting what we thought the scripture was saying. And then we would give it to him and he would have a red pen and it would be what he called his heresy pen. And he'd be like, he would underline anything right. that's completely... And there was heresy mm-hmm. in every... It, interpretation because it was like that's wrong actually that's not what god's like that's not what he means by that or that right. is totally out of context so some of the principles from that that were so crucial to me mm-hmm. was always read scripture in the context yes. and and it's very easy to read a little tiny section mm-hmm. and get it out of context just like if you walked into a conversation in the middle and you heard part of it mm-hmm. you could totally misinterpret what's going on right and so anytime you take a piece of scripture and you don't go, well, where are we? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Who's there? You know? I mean, if you turn on the TV, you would you would do that before you start interpreting what was going on. Sure. I mean, you'd go, okay, well, well who are the characters? Mm-hmm. You know, what's the storyline? You'd probably pause it and say, what happened so far? Yeah. Well, and this <laughs> is the... crucial. Yeah, and this is the beauty of the community of life group is that everybody is bringing to the table insights that God has given them. Right. And so one of the things I would do is is they think about and discuss this coming week about the scriptures and about the nuggets and studying the scriptures and that. Um, <clears throat> one, to share with each other uh, what, what disciplines you have regarding reading scriptures, uh, what works for you, and kind of everybody learn from the best practices, and it may give others ideas and and that and and don't be ashamed if you're not regimented yet. That's where you're trying to get to, right? And uh, and we all fail and we all miss those days and and things like that. But but encourage each other. So that's one nugget. And the other is, um, you know, how to help each other interpret. You know, put put out uh, put on the table the nuggets to talk about. And, and listen to the insight that the Holy Spirit gives different people and and what they may know about that context or that historical setting or things like that, right. and, and let that um, uh, help each one grow. So that, for me, would be some good questions. Because we're always kind of helping each other see it a little clearer, and that's why we get together, because you don't have a full picture. And so you'll be talking about a scripture or a story in the Word of God, and you're... You, Maybe you put something on God that he does he's not really like mm-hmm. or you or you put something into the text that's not really there, yeah, and we kind of have to correct one another a little bit and go well that that's an interesting insight <clears throat> mm-hmm. but it's a but but God wouldn't do that or God's you know, and that's about synthesizing scripture that's about taking you can't just go all right, I'm gonna only look at this one piece and I'm gonna completely right. understand it. you have to look at the Bible as a whole, yeah, and so if over here there's clarity. 
on this topic, you're going to go to the places where it's the most clear, not the most vague. Right. And then and and really try to pull out an interpretation um, and an understanding of scripture. So that's why it's so important to know the word mm-hmm. as a whole, because some things are unclear. But in if you look at the whole context of scripture, you're like, okay, this is true. This is true. This is true. And it gets you on the, in the middle of the road again, instead of falling off the ditch on either side. And and the two sides that are the most obvious that we all fall off is what we've been talking about is the danger of the disciplines in general is that you can fall into legalism on one side right. and you can fall into license on the other. Right. And so what's, how do we walk in the, in the truth of God's word in grace without becoming legalistic, without becoming controlling or manipulative in the way that we're approaching life and our relationships? All of that is so crucial. And these are just ideas of kind of ways of getting you re-engaged with scripture. Some people are on their phones with using you version mm-hmm. and you can pick a reading plan and it'll, Bible it'll, apps, it'll yeah. send it to you. Yeah. Or there's ones you can just listen to. If you're like, I don't like to read, get the ones that you just listen. Audio. Yeah. You yeah, version has an audio option on many of the translations. And so you can All actually right. listen to scripture in your car really easily. Okay. So there's a lot of things you can try. And I think there's going to be a lot of that kind of conversation going on in the groups right. as people are trying to figure out, well, how do I actually apply this? If that's not happening in your group, then we just learned about scripture and that it's important for no reason. Mm. If we don't actually talk about, well, how do I do this? What are some ways I could do this differently? Then uh, we can't grow. We can't yeah. learn. We can't, we can't get these new habits that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So make sure that we're all talking and you give people 100 ideas so that the ones that fit, you know, mm. and someone might go, I don't know, I just, I'm not going to do this. And it's like, I know I don't have time. And it's like, well, what about listening to the word in your car? Yeah. It's like you're already in your car. You know, like find, help people find solutions. Start somewhere. Start somewhere. Start yeah. small, start, start somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Well, there you have it, Life Groups. Um, a lot to talk about this week. Dive into the scriptures, talk about good practices, share ideas with each other, and encourage each other. No shame. Thank you. Good to see you. God bless.